Today we'll be doing a review of my telescope, the Skywatcher 200 PDS. And the purpose of this video is to really discover whether this is one of the best telescopes you can buy for under £500. Now I've had this telescope for nearly a year and I've shot galaxies through it, nebulae, planets. And I'll also be doing a review of what it's like to observe the night sky through as well. This is a 1000mm focal length telescope at f5. And I'll also talk about what that f ratio means, as well as the pros and cons of Newtonians in general. So let's get on with it. So the first thing I would say is that the high power of magnification means we can capture some great detail. So we can still capture those smaller targets, which are generally very difficult for smaller telescopes. For example, planets, which can capture some nice detail. I captured Saturn and Jupiter with it. But we can also capture some larger targets too, for example, the Orion Nebula. So it's really nice starter size to get some good variability. But the only negative I would say to that is that you can't capture the really large targets, for example, Andromeda Galaxy or the California Nebula. For those, you'll have to do mosaics, which as a beginner in astrophotography is probably not something you want to touch. Um, so I'd say stick to the basics with that one. So as long as you know that you're not going to go for those very large targets, this can capture almost everything. The other good thing about this telescope is that it's very reliable. You can capture some great resolution photos with it. Considering it's my first telescope, I'm very impressed with what I've been able to capture so far. Probably the best photo I've taken is of the Crescent Nebula. That was around three hours worth of exposure time, which I'll put onto the screen now. Now, if you've got deep pockets, you can probably end up spending in the thousands of pounds on different telescopes, which in my opinion, don't give you that much better resolution photos. So under 500 pounds, I would say that this telescope gives you exactly what you're after. I mentioned earlier that the focal length of the telescope was 1000 millimeters and it was at F5. So let's talk about what that actually means. So 1000 millimeters is the length of the telescope and the F ratio is simply the focal length divided by the diameter. So the diameter is 200 millimeters, making it F5. But what does that actually mean? So telescopes that are F5 or below are generally considered fast, and anything which is larger than that is considered slow. Faster telescopes have quicker light gathering capability, which effectively means that when you're capturing those photons from the nebulae and galaxies, they can capture more detail in a quicker period. Obviously, this is then gonna result in photos with much better quality and detail. So generally you do want telescopes which are F5 or below and this telescope fits those requirements. I would also say that the telescope has a nice feature which is the dual focuser um, and this basically allows you to have more precision when you're focusing the camera which just makes your life a lot easier when you want to get those nice sharp stars. So the final thing I wanted to talk about is the observational review. So I generally am not really that interested in observing through an eyepiece Beyond seeing planets, I don't really see the point of looking at stars in general. Um, but I would say that when you're looking at Saturn or Jupiter, it is just stunning to look at. You can easily see Saturn's rings. You can easily see the detail on Jupiter's surface along with the moons. It is just something spectacular. And if you do have a telescope, it's something I recommend you do as soon as possible. So observationally, I would say that this telescope does exactly what you'd want from it. Looking at the moon is also quite cool. So I definitely recommend you do that as well. Um, but beyond really those three targets, I'm generally not that interested in observing things through an eyepiece. Cool, so we've talked about a lot of the positives about this telescope, so now let's go on to the negatives. So the first thing I would say is that we have to collimate the telescope every single time you use it and that can get really frustrating and also you can sometimes doubt yourself that you've collimated properly and in the middle of a session you don't really want to mess with it. Um, so that can get quite annoying and especially as a starter in astrophotography um, you can end up doubting yourself quite often. This is just a general problem with Newtonians um, so let's just talk about what causes that. So this telescope has two mirrors, you've got one at the base and you've got one at the front. Uh, so when light comes through it hits the back of the telescope, rebounds back up to the front and there's a secondary mirror here and that just shoots straight through into the camera. Collimation effectively aligns the secondary mirror with the primary mirror so that the light aligns perfectly and that you get a great image when it comes through to your camera sensor. But if you do get it wrong, you can end up with some really bad artifacts in your photo and it's not a good look. The other kind of telescopes you can buy are refractors, which are just simple, straightforward telescopes where the light just hits through the lens and goes straight to the back and your camera's at the back of the telescope. However, refractors are a lot more expensive. So if you can handle the extra five minutes it takes to collimate your telescope, then secondary mirrors are probably a much more effective solution uh, for the price that you're willing to pay. So it's something you would have to take your time with and ensure that everything's collimated perfectly so it's all aligned 
before every single session. So just bear that in mind if you do want to buy a Newtonian. I will point out this is quite a minor issue, but it does get annoying, especially in winter when it's cold, you just want to get the session going. Um, and also if you're running against time, you kind of just don't want to deal with it. But it's just one of those things you have to deal with if you've got a Newtonian telescope. So the other issue I find is that you can get due on the secondary mirror, which is the mirror at the front. Uh, the primary mirror is generally quite well protected because the whole tube acts as a dew shield. Um, but what, if you do get a uh, dew on your secondary mirror, that can completely ruin your images. So that's just something to factor in. I generally deal with that by having a dew heater. Um, so normally it's a dew heater band which you wrap around the secondary mirror. However, that does cause some issues to the look of my stars in the photos, which I don't really like. So I've just recently bought a dew heater strip which wraps itself just behind the secondary mirror, heats it up to ensure that the dew doesn't form on it. So I haven't actually used that yet in an imaging session, so I'm hoping that that resolves those problems. But it's just another thing to factor in if you are looking to buy a Newtonian, that you will need probably a dew heater strip and not a dew heater band to put on the secondary mirror. If you do have a refractor, all you then need is just a dew heater band to wrap around the front and then you're good to go. But unfortunately, you can't really achieve that with a Newtonian. The other potential problem, or maybe it's just something you'll improve on, is the guiding. So this is a very heavy telescope, and so you need quite a sturdy mount in order to get effective guiding. Along with that, it's got quite a high power of magnification, meaning that any guiding error will be really noticeable in images, uh, just because of how magnified the image is. So as a beginner in astrophotography, you're probably going to struggle to get those really sharp stars. But it's just something you need to know if you're going into the hobby, that your guiding might not be spot on, um, and it's going to take time to learn that process. But once you do, you'll be absolutely fine. And it's kind of just a problem with the hobby as a whole, as opposed to this, this telescope. But the other key thing I did point out there is that you need a sturdy mount to capture the night sky properly with this kind of telescope, just because of the sheer weight of it. And mounts are generally very expensive. So I bought the EQ6R Pro. Um, so that was a much more sturdy mount, but also more expensive because I knew I wanted to take this hobby very seriously. Uh, but it does bring your overall cost up. So if you're looking for a cheaper solution, maybe a smaller telescope is better for you, along with a mount which is less sturdy, but just strong enough to hold that smaller telescope. But if you're thinking more long-term, which is what I was, then you'd probably want a telescope which is much more sturdier, and then you only need to buy once. So the other negative I have kind of goes hand in hand with the previous ones in terms of its sheer size and weight. So if you're looking to be a travel astrophotographer, take this with you, it's quite obvious that this probably isn't right for you. It takes up a lot of space and it's going to be heavy to carry around along with needing that sturdy amount which I mentioned earlier. So it's definitely something to think about if you want to be an astrophotographer who goes to different locations. You probably want a smaller telescope which is just a lot easier to carry around. So that probably sums up all of the issues I have with this telescope. So let's go to the final verdict. So here's my final verdict. I believe that this is a great starter telescope if you know that astrophotography is definitely for you. If not, then you should probably just get a smaller telescope, which is going to be much more forgiving when it comes to the guiding. Um, it's going to be easier to move around and carry. Uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier that way. My second telescope is going to be a small refractor, which is going to give me much more variability with my potential targets. Having this large telescope is going to give me the high magnification photos, and then I can use that smaller one for the wide field views so I can more or less capture everything in the night sky. So yeah, I would say that this telescope is probably one of the best ones you can buy for under £500 if you know that astrophotography is definitely for you and you've got the passion to really pursue the hobby. I hope you found this review helpful and if you did, please leave a comment down below if you have a Newtonian and any positives and negatives of your experience with that or if you're thinking about buying this telescope in the near future. I'm Rajan and you've been watching God's Art.